Hey everyone, this is Lucky7DX. Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. In the last episode, we took on the first temple, the Temple of Fire. And this episode, well, I'm showing this off for starters because this happens every time you start the game, apparently. They show up this cutscene again. Um, I'm pretty sure they show this at the beginning of the game. I'm not sure if... I'm not sure. If you press start, you can actually skip it by pressing the skip with the, on your touchpad, but... Uh, they show this off at the beginning. I figured it was worth the momentary time to show that off, but... Uh, Anyway, this is the start of my second recording session, actually, so that's why I actually decided to show it off. And one thing I did notice, um, by the way, in this episode we head back to the Temple of the Ocean King to find the clue of the next spirit, blah, 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 we've seen the plot before. Um, we gotta go find the next MacGuffin, we gotta get the three MacGuffins so we can do a thing so we can go get more MacGuffins to beat the game, it's a Zelda game, that's how it always works. I've never shown off the menu screen though in this game, and I definitely want to do that. Obviously there's a save option to save whenever, but um, you have your C chart here. Uh, the map's also self explanatory I've seen how the map works plenty of times. You can zoom in anything and draw on the map if you want, uh, and erase everything on the map if you want. So I don't know why I never show off the menu off, just kind of plain forgot to do that for once, but uh, more importantly is our collection screen. I haven't shown this off yet, so this is what the collection screen looks like for uh, Phantom Hourglass. You have your fairies there, you have your... Uh, the Force Gems and, you know, Sword Shield and plenty of other things for us to get. So we clearly have a lot to collect this game. Uh, we also have our ship parts and our uh, treasure. So the ship parts are something that's gonna actually, it's actually going to be coming into play really soon. It works similar to um, Spirit Tracks in that if you have multiple parts of the same type, you can, and there's plenty of different types in this game, uh, you can get uh, more hearts. Basically, the works, if you have three parts of a type, you get a heart. If you have two parts of a golden type, you get a heart. So if you have three, three, and two... If a golden one is for the two, you can actually have up to seven hearts, or if you have all eight golden parts, you'll have eight hearts total. I'm probably going to gun for a seven by trying to get three, three, and two, because it's kind of rare to get uh, the golden parts in this game, though. Otherwise, the other thing is that there's treasure here. Um, this will come into play soon when we sell it, but that's how the menus work for this game, so wanted to quickly show that off before we get underway with this episode, but uh, that being said, we should get underway. We have the Temple of the Ocean King to take care of today. Hey, we, we're busy explaining things, Lineback. It's important. Your treasure can wait a little bit. The lightning, yeah, you are you are a bit of a putz. Oops, I said no. I, I meant to say yes. I'm sorry. We're going on a boat. We're going on a boat, yeah! It's going fast, yeah! Except it's really not. Although it's cool that we have a steamboat instead of like, the, the sail boat in this game, because, uh... I don't know, I just think it's kind of interesting how that works. Anyway, heading to Merce Island, Merke Island, whatever the heck you want to call it. Uh, that's where the Temple of the Ocean King lies. And very soon, I think, by the way, I'll start uh, doing what I did for Spear Tracks and speeding up the boat segments here, because there's only so much of... I mean, I guess you're not taking the same tracks every time, though, so it's, it's a bit more unique. Because, uh, I mean, there are fixed tracks when you're on a train and whatnot. Also, Beetle, I see you right there. I'm totally going to ram your ship. It's totally going to happen. I don't want to ram your ship. Beetle, Beetle, move out the way. Beetle. I'm totally gonna hit your sh- No, okay, he stopped. Also, uh, there's a golden frog here. That golden frog, I don't think we've seen the golden frog before. If we have, I just haven't paying atten been paying attention, but uh, that will be coming into play later when we actually have the relevant things for it. There's a couple things we have to actually need before the uh, golden frogs become relevant to our interests. But that's actually something that will be happening really soon, so uh, keep that in mind. There's a golden frog there. It'll spawn every time we go near that area, so uh, keep that golden frog in mind. And for now, we're back on Merkay Island, so the first thing you will notice is this thing's now open, so we can head in here. The uh, shipbuilder guy is actually now over here, so we can talk to him, but we also can go here first to get a new ship part! The Peaceful Bridge ship part. It's randomized every time you do it. If you save and reset, you'll actually get a random part anyway. It's not even fixed to your game save. Uh, but you can go to this guy and basically customize your ship parts. So now that we have a new part, we can hit customize here. And we got a, uh, a bridge. So now instead of having a weird little thing, we'll have a castle on our boat. Apparently we're going to be going for castles today in, in this in this project. And I am okay with that. Also, I guess since I haven't didn't show that off properly, uh, you can also go to... View ship in order to actually see your ship the way it looks like. You can zoom in and out and rotate and so on and so forth. We have a castle on our ship! It's not a castle in the clouds, but it's a castle on a ship. It's a close second, and I will accept that. Anyway, um, now that we've taken care of that, there's not really much else to do in the village besides just head straight to the Temple of the Ocean King. This, the treasure teller, is still closed, so uh, we'll be able to sell our treasures soon enough for money. But money's not going to be the biggest issue anymore. Once you get past that first dungeon, they start giving you a lot more funds, and it's a, 
It's really nice. So that's the plan there. That's right. There's these still need me bombs, so we can't actually just leave me alone. Money. Anyway, let's head to the uh, Temple of the Ocean King, and we will progress the plot a bit. You know, enough dilly-dallying and side stuff. It's time for us to take on the plot and accidentally roll around because this game's rolls are really inconsistent. That's the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll be a little bit annoyed about is that the game, like, it rolls kind of when it feels like rolling, and not even when I, like, tell you to roll. It just kind of rolls. It just rolls that way. Ha 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 Pun. Anyway, uh, Limebeck actually follows us here. I didn't... You're sleeping lazy. Why are you here? Although he's just kind of. Yes, I know. Don't waste energy. He's basically just here to be like, hey, don't forget, this temple will suck the life out of you. Now, last time, you know, we were losing hearts pretty quickly. So, how deep are we going to be able to get without dying? That's the that's the question. We're kind of uh, in trouble. We don't want to end up like that guy. That's for sure. So, uh... oh, of course, you are always such a coward, Lineback. Exactly. You're the older one here. Don't be an adult. I need an adult. Not a wussy. Anyway, um, however, we actually have a method to get past the curse of this temple. And, uh, of course, Oshis is here to tell us how to do that. So, um, yeah, he, he now believes in our power. We've proven our power by being able to rescue Leaf, the spirit of power. Speaking of which, now that we have Leaf, the spirit of power, we can actually, you know, access the temple further. So, before that, though, you head up on this altar that we showed last time. I don't know why we couldn't grab this last time. Well, I guess it's because we got the sand from that boss last time. I guess that's why we can now actually use this thing. But hey, it's an hourglass, and you might be able to guess this is the Phantom Hourglass. The uh, namesake item of the game. So we now have, uh, well, we have an hourglass, which will allow us to get further into the Temple of the Ocean King. Uh, the, the mechanics of it will be explained soon enough. So the sand goes into the hourglass. Well, it kind of freezes in the air first. Go! Take it! It is your destiny! Uh, okay. Become the hero of time! But I'm already here the hero of winds! Be both! Okay! Well, this is officially the weirdest commentary over getting an important item ever. But that's okay. We got the Phantom Hourglass. And Link's all like, yeah! Jazz hands pose! So it's filled with golden sand, and this mysterious item will allow us to continue uh, to run deeper into this dungeon of sorts. So, uh, with the Phantom Hourglass, we, basically we don't lose life as we uh, go through the temple. So, um, that being said, it's only for a limited amount of time. Oh! Dramatic. So yeah, as long as, 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 long as sand is in the Hourglass, we, our life will not be drained, we'll be safe. Uh, we can't actually flip it over again, so it's, it's a one-time thing, because you need to be outside in order for the sand to time to reset. In other words, you have to leave the dungeon and come back in to reset uh, the time you have in your hourglass. In other words, we have to hurry, because we have a limited amount of time to get... Basically, the way this game works is, after every dungeon, essentially, we're going to come back here, delve a little bit deeper, um, and get through you know, the puzzles as quickly as possible in order to basically beat the time limit. Of course, it's going to be more complicated than that, but that's, that's the basics there. So, uh, we have to collect the sand of ours. The more sand we get, the longer um, we'll last. So, as we beat more bosses and other things, um, we'll be able to add more time to our hourglass and find the clues the, for the other two spirits and the other magical MacGuffins that we'll need to find. But, uh, it's time to use the Phantom Hourglass to head into the temple. And how does this guy know so much? Well,. That's a story for another time. Uh, unfortunately, the plot does not require this knowledge at the moment. And, uh, of course, Lambeck's easily distracted by treasure. You greedy, greedy little math, a creepy little smile. I'm leaving you behind. Goodbye. So let's head into the temple. The hourglass turns over. Ten minutes remain. So we have ten minutes to find the... Well, we have a bit more than ten minutes. You'll see, the way it works is... Uh, I'll actually leave here to explain a little bit, too. In the upper left-hand corner is the... Uh, basically, the... Uh, uh, the amount of time left in the hourglass, so we have to find the next clue before the sands uh, escape, so we'll have to keep that in mind, keep an eye on the time, and uh, so on and so forth. I'm going to keep the focus on the bottom screen through this dungeon regardless, because every time I zoom up every time I go to a new floor anyway, so unless there's anything really important about the time left over, um, I'm sure you guys can kind of... It, 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 honestly, the time limit in this game is not really that difficult to get past, so it's not even that big of a deal. Uh, as you can see, the way this works is when you're outside of the purple safe zones, uh, as we're going to call them from now on, time does go down. While you're inside of them, it actually stays still. 
So as long as you're in a purple safe zone, anyway, the time's not decreasing. So keep that in mind. Uh, the purple safe zones are kind of your place to plan out your next move, because... Well, as you're going to see, it's going to be important to have these safe zones, because there are some dangerous things in the Temple of the Ocean King. Uh, being, basically, the, uh, phantoms. For those of you who watch my Spirit Tracks Let's Play, you guys will recognize these guys, but technically these are the first times you've ever seen phantoms. Dangerous enemies that you cannot kill and that will one-shot you, or at least, uh, stun you of sorts. Basically, if they hit you, they'll send you back to the beginning of the area, you lose a heart, and you will, uh, also lose 30 seconds on your timer, so be careful not to get hit by them too much, or you'll actually run out of time and start dying. So be very careful about them, so there's no way to defeat them, we just have to run. If we get spotted, head to a safe zone, uh, the purple safe zones are where you're basically immune to the curse, and the phantoms are part of this curse, so so on and so forth. If they see you, run to a safe zone and hide. Link's just like, all this conversation, and I'm a mute! Anyway, um... So, they're safe zones. Yeah, I've, I've explained all this already, Leaf, in a much quicker pace than you are. Okay, we get it, we get it, we'll... Yes, I get it. So, don't let a phantom see me. Okay! So this is what happens when a phantom sees you. Uh, <laughs> you get... You get spotted, he'll be like, I'll get you, and... I'll fight you! I'll fight you! I'll fight you! I'll fight you! Yeah! Oh, no. No fighting. Yeah, you, this, you're not gonna have a good time against a phantom. You lose 30 seconds off the clock, like I said, not a big deal right now, and you'll also take a heart of damage. So, let's do this properly now. This floor... Hey, there's a guy. Hello, dead guy! So we don't want to light the torches down there where the map indicates. But, uh, how are you supposed to light two of them? Well, we have a boomerang to light one of them if the other one's lit. How do you light the first one up? Well, that's actually fairly simple. This. And there you go, we have a lit torch. Uh, however, it's a for a little bit of time. Also, we need a key to get through that door to head to the next floor. The phantom's over there, so we're gonna head around this way. Uh, head to a safe zone, because when you're in the safe zone, you will still be uh, able to hit this torch and get just far enough to light the other one with your boomerang. So, with that, the fire over to the left there heads away, and now we're gonna have to go deal with this phantom. So, uh, we head over here, and kinda be like, hey! Uh, if you hit them, you, they, or you hit, if you make any sort of noise, they'll be like, hey, who goes there? And you can kind of distract them, and hopefully, yeah, he'll head down, so... Kind of distract him off his path so he stops heading upwards to save a little bit of time. We can head over here, and we'll learn actually a bit more about a different colored pot. What, we actually have to break pots for reasons other than our own greed and selfishness? Awesome! So if you break these red pots, you'll actually cut, um, make a little portable safe zone. In fact, if you pick them up and throw them, you can make a safe zone wherever you wherever they land. So keep that in mind. You can sort of make your own safe zone, which is really important. So we head over here, this will lower the gate here and allow us access to the key up on top. Uh, so we'll quickly grab this key, and then we have to make our way back past Mr. Phantom 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 Phantom, and head to the, the door over here, because unfortunately we don't have bombs, and we unfortunately need bombs to get past here. So, we'll go ahead, alert his presence here to speed him up a little bit, and uh... Oh, he's sneaking that down that way. Well, bye! Run, 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 hide, 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 because the other phantom's actually coming this way. Keep track of the phantom's movements when you're playing this. Uh, you might get cornered, and that'll end up being bad times, so... Hey, Mr. Phantom. Bye, Mr. Phantom! Woo! Run away! Run away, run away! Gonna run away! Gonna roll away! Nope, I... See, rolling... Whenever I want to roll, it doesn't roll. Whenever I do want... Don't want to roll, it rolls. I don't... You know, I don't even. So, we're done with that floor. Welcome to Basement 2. So on this floor, we kind of have to actually play the Phantom Distraction game a bit more seriously, because this guy is guarding the thing. He'll also kind of rotate around, as you can see, and uh, look in different directions, so care, be careful not get spotted by him. The best way to handle this is uh, head over here. You want to hit this switch. This will actually attract him over this way. Uh, you can use that time to then quickly hit the switch, because as long as the... Oh, he spotted me. Well, time to run away and hit the other switch here because we actually need this switch in order to have a key spawn here. Hi guy, how's it going? Well, I'm just gonna freeze time and talk to you for a bit. They can hear when a switch is hit, so use noise to distract phantoms if you need to. Your boomerang is also a great way to distract phantoms, as we're going to learn. I am very much in trouble here. Um, well, good thing the other phantom didn't notice me. Oh, okay, well, double phantom power. Yay for... Hey, I actually kind of lure the other phantom all the way over here now, though. It's kind of actually kind of nice. So, uh, go over here, you can use your boomerang to hit the switch over here. Now the other fa usually you have to kind of juke around the other phantom down here, but now that he's already up here, I don't even have to worry about this anymore. 
that's actually really great. That that's extremely handy. So uh, over here, there's the little blue switch, red switch thing. Uh, what do you have to say, Mr. Dead Guy? Watch the fat the paths that the phantoms walk. Blah blah blah. Uh, do be careful of that. As you can see, there's a wet red switch, blue switch thing here, so you can uh, get back easier and we'll hurry up a little bit so we don't so we can dodge that phantom that's uh, kind of walking over there. I'm just gonna make a safe zone over here just in case I need it. And uh, hit the switch over here. Of course, if we had a bomb, this would be a, a way easier. Uh, if you get off the switch, the spice will come back. So once again, don't forget that you have a projectile uh, boomerang to help you out here. It's definitely handy. You'll get the uh, small key and be able to uh, keep going. So I should be able to make it here enough time without him noticing me, and no. Well, good thing I can block him off. Ha <laughs> ha! You suck. Moving on. So, and there's also a save zone over here, but we can't really do anything to access that right now. There is a yellow pot. We'll, we'll get an exploration step what the yellow pot does soon enough, though. And uh, with seven minutes remaining, it's time for us to head to the third and final floor, as uh, Leaf is going to tell us. The clue is on this floor, so just more floor to go. As like, like I said, time is not the biggest issue. What we need to do is uh, the clue is going to be in this door over here. In order to get through this door, we have to offer up force gems on these pedestals and kind of create a triforce. So, uh, also, well, that's a yellow chest. We can't, or we can't do anything with that yet. First thing we'll do is we'll head over here and. Uh, Hit this switch. This will cause the spikes to stop and allow us to uh, get around here easier. And there's also a treasure chest over here. There'll be three treasure chests. All three of these chests will have a force gem inside them. So we got a we got a triangle. Yeah. So what we need to do is take this gem to uh, the triforce. Basically, to take all three of those gems to that safe zone and put them in there. And that will allow us to get entry to the door and get to the clue. So that's the last major thing we have to do, essentially, before we get our clue. Um, the thing is, you're, it's, it's like how carrying the big key works in the dungeon. You're really slow when, uh, when doing that, so you can't really run away from phantoms. You kind of want to especially avoid them when you're holding a thing, as you can see. Really slow. You can kind of throw it and go faster that way. Um, it will show up on your map, so if you uh, need to know where it is, you can easily figure it out that way. But for now, we're going to head up here Throw the force gem into one of these. Th really? That didn't count. Throw it into one of these things, and uh, two more to get. So, fairly simple puzzle. I mean, this is kind of intro to Temple of the Ocean King. Now, if you've been paying attention to the, t if you've seen the top screen earlier on, you'll notice that there's a key here uh, that this phantom's actually holding. So we're gonna actually, um, I was gonna here, I'm gonna lure him over here, Mr. Guy. Oh, also, if you get caught by the phantoms, you can't go into that safe zone. So. Keep that in mind, head to a safe zone, lure him over here, and uh, we're going to want to either strike him down or use our boomerang. Uh, the boomerang also, I'll just demonstrate the boomerang, the boomerang also works on the phantoms to hit them, but again, to drop the key, and as you can see, the boomerang does distract the phantoms as well if you need a long distance distraction while you're in the safe zone, you can kind of be like, do the whole, like, throw the rock over there and lure them a different way to distract them, so I could be like, hey, actually, can I hit something like over here, be like, oh, oh, I guess that, that noise doesn't count. He doesn't notice the boomerang whizzing by his face, apparently. Well, you can basically hit them to distract them in, in certain ways if you need a distraction, so... Phantoms carry keys? Yeah, we already showed this. Yeah, well, we, if only you had a boomerang or a sword, then you would have been okay. Alas, you had neither, and you were not okay. So we head over here, we can go ahead and grab a force gem, and before I take it back, I've just noticed that my 3DS's battery is once again dying. So I'm gonna quickly charge my 3DS in before it dies. My 3DS seems to have a trend of trying to die while I'm recording videos, so uh, that's a thing apparently. Anyway, all we need to do is take our force jump over here. Luckily, because of uh, my slight delay, the Phantom actually moved to an area that's convenient for me, so hey, a demonstration that sometimes waiting for a minute can actually uh, lead to easier situations when dealing with Phantoms. So the final thing we need to do is head over to the top area here, and we'll actually learn about these yellow pots that will uh, restore time from the hourglass. So yellow pots will allow us to have a little bit more time. So an extra 30 seconds to our time uh, brings us all the way back up to above six minutes, and we get the final force gem over here. So the only thing I want to check before we uh, finish this area is I just want to make sure there's no more treasures or anything around here. There's a yellow, there's a red pot over here if you need another safe zone, and down here, oh, there's a switch. What is the switch for? Oh, well there's apparently stuff we can do over here. Let's leave our force gem quickly and investigate. Because I think we can get a treasure over here, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, we can actually, uh, that's right, I forgot you can do this. You can 
drop the phantom. So that's actually one of the key. If you, uh, there's another option to gain the keys, you can just literally kill him by doing that. And you can uh, also kill him over there. So actually, that's another option for dealing with the phantoms is, uh, you can just drop him into a pit. I forgot that was even a thing you could do. I didn't actually do that in my practice file. Okay, that guy's going up that way, so it's safe to go this way. Um, creating a safe zone near the entrance here is actually a fairly good idea, just because it will help you out if you, uh, there's not really a good place to escape here if you get cornered in this area. So creating a safe zone of Red Pot is potentially a good idea to do there. Anyways, with that, we have the third and final Force Gem in place, or whatever those things are called, and, uh, we've created a Triforce, and we're able to move forward. So, we can head up here. And here, it seems that the uh, time isn't stopping. There's no fog. There's no curse in this room. So it seems to be a bit of a safe area. So uh, we can relax. No more danger to be had. Uh, you get an extra 30 seconds on the clock if you really care. You can head out this way, which will just uh, lead you to this area over here above uh, where we got the third force gem there. So keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, we head over here and we get a treasure chest with a Northwestern Sea Chart. So we have, once again, another new Sea Chart, another new sea to explore, and potentially a clue. Although, uh, that chart seems rather dusty and weird, so we might want to, uh, clean it off at some point, but it's probably something we're going to have to do next episode. For now, uh, this will give us a way back over here, and uh, in case you guys didn't notice, there's another door locked with a symbol over here, so we're going to need to get a new ferry in order to progress further in the Temple of the Ocean King. So, um, we will do that at some other point. For now, step into the blue light, return to the temple's entrance. We have a new sea chart. Mission accomplished. Let's go get, we have a new clue to head to, uh, the next spirit. And with that, I think, uh, that's gonna be pretty much it for the episode. So, in the next episode, guys, we're going to decipher the clues of the, uh, new map and head to the next... Islands, or well, actually, the next group of islands. There's a lot of things to do actually between the first dungeon and the second dungeon. So, we're gonna start making the trek to recover the second ferry in the next one, guys. So, it's Lucky 70X signing out. See you guys in the next episode of, Le of The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Sometimes I can actually talk properly. Um, so, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye bye.